stay. Hello, Shona. Great to see you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so my name is Kelly Mabel, and uh, you found your way to what is called the Kind Mind Room. And uh, I'm really glad to be here this morning. Um, I, my beautiful friend, uh, Julian Fraser, I met him for the very first time in person. I knew nothing about this guy. And I stumbled my way all over the oceans and the seas and the waters to London. And I made my way to what would be my first convention. After having gone to the little school on Salt Spring for a couple of years, it was time to step up into bigger, bigger, bigger events. And so I found myself greeted at the door by Julian, who was at the helm of basically everything that was going on there, along with a whole bunch of his friends and team. And I offered to volunteer my services and I was lucky enough to get on the front door service. So I was handing the tags to everybody, which um, couldn't have been more appropriate for me because I love to get social. And then I got kind of got to see the, you know, what I thought at the time were like the movie stars, you know, and this was the man behind the scene of it all. And so I very much enjoyed myself. I never spoke to him again after I was given my, here's your tag, follow Hannah Studley here, she'll tell you what to do, and he was out. <laughs> and and it was interesting because really the, the event was huge. Um, I think there was upwards of 12 or 1300 people at that particular event. And it was the event where Elsie was retiring. And so, uh, and I think Jack Pransky retired at the same time. And Julian was running around to, uh, it's a, it was in a, what's, it, what was that stadium called, Julian? I forget even. Um, it was called, the, it's the Saracens Rugby Stadium. So the Saracens are a rugby team, yes. Premier League rugby team over here. Rugby being the British version of American football. <laughs> of all stars, of all stars, I've got it. So imagine right. being in this huge forum area and these little tiny rooms and they're all full of amazing speakers speaking the three principles. And Julian was running around between them all and organizing and ensuring that we were all in our right places with the right people. And, um, and that is how I witnessed him. <laughs> And then since then, I, I volunteered yet again, and I was able to get online. And that was the big switch for the convention. And yet again, uh, this lovely man was at the helm, along with many team supporters, and uh, they manifested a great convention. And uh, again, I got to see his, okay, you guys get in the room? Okay, bye. <laughs> and he was in and out, headphones on. Uh, yet there was something so much more about this person who was running around and I want him to share with us today if he so chooses about some of the experiences prior to these conventions, his life, um, the almond tree, uh, his family, um, some of the things he does in work and in pleasure. And so I am going to turn that all over to you and we can start wherever you'd like, but I would say maybe the experience, your experience of what brought you to where you are. Uh, so right. some backstory, <laughs> and then we can go from there and see what everybody else wants to hear about. Sound good? Okay. That sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you for that introduction, Kelly. That was lovely. Um, so how did, how did I get here? Um, is, is quite a, it's, it's an interesting story. Um, so I was um, working for uh, Rabbi Shao Rosenblatt, who is the kind of co-host of the 3P UK, uh, you know, um, convention, conference, as we call it. But um, I was working for him, um, you know, 20 odd years ago, having previously worked in, uh, in um, quality assurance, for a uh, software, um, you know, production, you know, big, I worked for General Electric Company at one point, but but I found myself working for him because I wanted to do something more meaningful, and it was a an educational a charity. So we were an educational charity trying to help people um, just do better in life, um, and and we he, he had been previously to to uh, visit um, the, the Pranskys who I, I think you, you may know or may have heard of, um, George Pransky, Pransky and Associates. He'd been to visit George Pransky and he'd come across the principles and, and we'd kind of just, you know, 
started this new organization as it were and he said I, I you know I'd really like to um I think I think this has the the uh the uh, has something to it the principles as it were has something to it in terms of what we want to teach people so um I'd like to invite a friend of mine over um who at that time was learning with um Sid Banks and this was in um We'll work this out. This was in 2005, 2006. He was learning with Sid Banks in Salt Spring. Um, and so he, this, this other rabbi, as it were, came over um, and gave us a seminar. And at that point, I was um, not a seeker. I was not looking for um, a life changing um, experience. Um, I was, I was, you know, I was attending this seminar primarily because um, we were looking for something for the organization to teach people. And, and yet it, I, I heard something in this, this presentation that did touch me, that did uh, open my eyes, as it were, to a, deep, a, div, a deeper level of um, a human experience. You know, it kind of showed me that I was a conscious human being and I could consider my experience and see um, beyond the the reality that I lived in. Um, and at that point, um, I was, I was, I was, uh, like I said, I was this middle manager kind of like organizing, you know, small projects and, and things like that. Um, I was, I was quite an aggressive uh, person. Um, I used to lose my temper quite frequently. And um, Having been through that experience, I then went for um, I went for what's called like an intensive. I went for like a you know a, a four day program. I went away for a week. I went back to um, to where this 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 gentleman was living in Seattle, and I kind of you know st studied the principles as it were for a full week, and and it, it had a big impact on me. It, it did uh, change my experience. I saw that. Um, my thinking was creating my experience that I was able to, you know, perceive of, of the fact that I was thinking and that I had within me an ability to um, let it go, you know, let, let that pass. And, and as a result, not at that point, just react to my thinking. Um, and so that start started and sparked a journey um of well you know sort of the last um uh, work this out yeah no, that was about 96 97 that you know the last you know kind of 15 years um of discovery really uh you know it opened up my eyes to seeing that that change is possible and that i had the ability to uh move past you know the things that were getting in my way um it's it, so what happened uh, um uh, you know over the first few years was that i went from being this angry um aggressive um person who would lose my temper at these conferences to being what kelly described at the top of the of of our meeting which was that i was um i was i could you know be quite jolly and quite um um, happy. I didn't need to take it all as intensely and as seriously as I as I thought as I thought I did. You know, so rather than just reacting to life, I could actually um, enjoy it, and so that's what I did. Um, and and you know, over the space of the first couple of years, um, my life changed. So I went from um, rather than you know losing my temper with. With people over you know silly things and being a micromanager i started to believe in the essence of and see the essence of human beings and their capabilities and um realized that within myself i was living within a very kind of uh, small-minded view of the world you know that i could see beyond that um and and so that's really where it started, and and over you know over the next fifteen years, things changed. I I wasn't as I said I wasn't looking. I hadn't been looking previously, you know, for um, you know to become sort of some practitioner, um, to become you know a teacher in that respect. Um, 
but having been touched by this understanding and seeing that there was um there was something that people were missing out on um i realized that i could try and help others and i had a responsibility to help others and so you know i i you know kind of i did a bit of training to become a practitioner um and uh, you know i mean there's 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 lots of gaps to fill in but you know as 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 kelly touched on at the beginning you know i i i helped set up the conference in in 2010 um and then in 2000 and since 2011 the second year i've been um you know directing that and building that and working to you know further the principles in the world um i've also as as she also mentioned you know with my daughter um and, and also my son i had two special needs children um my daughter has severe cerebral palsy so she was injured at birth um 18 years ago and it's funny because i i've i you know i might so just to finish on my son my son has um he has autism and adhd he's verbal but he he can be quite um you know challenging from a behavioral perspective um but so they each present their own challenges i mean look life presents its own challenges and you know an understanding of the principles and how the mind works is you know it's it's kind of you know, it's in, immensely helpful in terms of navigating life and just doing better with it, you know, and not, you know, getting sucked into and going down the rabbit hole of, you know, painful experiences, which can and you know, do happen to all of us from time to time. Um, so I, I, I guess that's an introduction. Yeah, Kelly. I'd love you to share a little bit around because some people here have come for the for the insights that you've had around your daughter and around your son and um you know the experience of uh, maybe sharing a little bit about who she is and when she was born and who he is and just some of the the experiences you went through to see things differently and um would you touch yeah. on, would you share a little bit about that yeah mm -hmm. yeah so <laughs> she's 18 she's 18 and <clears throat> you know it, it, that i ca i learned about the principles after she was born so to speak but um and i guess the first thing you know that i want to that i that i talk about with her is that even though that happened after that i do see the the change that happened with the experience of her birth is definitely rooted and as a result or not a result a result of the truth of the principles. In other words, the, the principles are existing and are working regardless of whether we know them or not, okay? So the idea that our thinking is creating our experience doesn't mean that I need to know about them in order to, uh, for them to work, right? Yeah, so, yeah. right. So, and so calling them the principles is, is not relevant in that respect, right? In other words, so when she was born, I'll, I'll tell you the story and then you're, you're kind of, I think you, it'll become clearer. So yeah. when she was born, as I said, she was injured when she was born. So we went into the hospital. One second. So we went into the hospital um, for her to be delivered. Um, and we went through labour. Um, I said we, obviously my wife, not me. I mean, I was there to assist her, but yeah. Um, um, that's a different story. But so, so she, you know, she was in labor and, um, you know, no, nothing was happening as it were. Um, and, and then there was this, you know, kind of huge dip in the heart rate. They were monitoring her heart rate, the baby's heart rate, my daughter, and there was this huge dip in the heart rate. Um, and, um, I we kind of sort of got a bit shocked by that, and I ran and got the 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 midwife, the nurse, and she came back in and she said, "Oh, just I think the 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 uh, the, the monitors got stuck, um, or it's moved. Sorry, it's not got stuck. It's moved up. It's moved. So can you just um, you know just move around a little bit, Mrs. Fraser? And I think it will it will it will self correct. And she did that, and it did. Now what we didn't know until afterwards was that from that moment it was monitoring my wife's heart rate and not my daughter's heart rate and so she was in distress her heart rate was 
uh, was very slow at that point, the baby, and nobody knew about it. And so when they delivered her about an hour later, um, um, sorry, I'm just I'm just a bit distracted because I, I have a little video here which I put together for my program. I might as well just kind of put it on if that's helpful. Yeah. If you, you should be on. able to, yeah. you should be able to see that. So this is her when she was born, um, and this was just straight afterwards. So she was born not breathing for about um, ten minutes. That's what the records show that she wasn't breathing for ten minutes, um, and as a result, she suffered from you know brain damage, cerebral palsy, and um, it means that she's. You know, she you can see her trying to feed herself here, but but she 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 can't feed herself and so she needs assistance. So this is my other daughter here, just feeding her, giving her a drink. Um, this is her as an adult on the the right. You can see her in the chair. Um, and but she has a very, you know, you can see she has a very wicked sense of humor. Yeah, they um, come back again. Um, that was a bit um, impromptu, but there you go. I have uh, the, the, the production software here all set up. Um, so yeah she wasn't breathing for about 10 minutes and um it was a big shock like you can imagine you go in and your uh you, you know a, a, a family's expectations husband and wife you know our expectations were that she was going to be the same as my first son you know all healthy and normal and when she, you know she wasn't breathing for 10 minutes so at that point we didn't know why but it was just a huge shock um, you know, especially obviously those first 10 minutes, because you don't know whether or not she's going to actually live or not. Um, you know, it's only afterwards you say she wasn't breathing for 10 minutes and those 10 minutes she's not breathing and, and, and it's immensely, uh, you know, distressing. Um, but, you know, once she was breathing, she then went into the ICU and she, you know, she, she was diagnosed with brain damage and, you know, the results are that she needs waking care she she can't um dress herself she can't toilet herself she can't feed herself she can't you know write she can't you know school is all through electronic devices and things like that um so she needs one-to-one -one assistance during the day um and it was obviously when a child is just born they're very you don't know what that you don't know what that's going to look like and doctors can't fill in the blanks either because they don't know either they they just and can tell you well this is what this this shouldn't look like this it should look like that and it's damaged so um they just don't know what you know no one has really any answers and so uh, i went into this kind of downward spiral of just panic and pain and um just worry and concern about what was life going to be like what was going to happen how was um how was she, you know what was her life going to be you know was she you know was she gonna uh you know go to school was she gonna you know kind of walk talk get married have kids whatever it was all just a big uh mess as it were of of overwhelm i guess overwhelm is the right answer um and it was obviously very distressing and I had, you know, I've kind of spoken about this a few times and I did it as part of our, you know, the Almond Tree kind of course, but um, webinars. But at some point I, I could see that, th that I was in distress. Okay. And again, I don't know how this, how this happened other than I just got some sort of insight. But what I could see was that when I was thinking about the future, Okay, I found it very distressing. Like I would be thinking about what's going to happen, filling in the blanks, you know, like making it up, worrying. Well, why can't the doctor tell me what, you know, what, what, you know how, how? So all of that was just a rush and just uh, overwhelming. And when I wasn't thinking about that, in other words, when I was going about my business and just, you know, uh, well, initially just going to the hospital and driving up there and just being, you know, and finding a parking space and, you know, speaking to the nurses and speaking to my wife and all of that. She was actually fine. Right. So I could see that when I was thinking about what might happen, it was distressing. Um, and when I didn't, then it wasn't. I could see that. And so I had this thought, which was, again, in very simplest terms, which was, well, 
don't think about it you know like just just try not to think about it do your best not to um consider what might happen because right now she's fine you're fine everything is fine um and thinking about it is upsetting you so so don't think about it and and that was really helpful that insight was really helpful because in the simplest terms it was it, it i could see even that thinking about the future wasn't helping me solve any of the problems it was actually just creating more more issues you know just you i would get into these cycles of just unanswered questions which was painful um and for me to try and help my daughter was actually it was better not to think about those things because they were just worry and overwhelm and so with that armed with that insight and i can best describe it as just insight but it was effectively just a bit of well it, it, i could also say it was logic and common sense you know it was that, that somehow i had some ability to see my own experience and just see that thinking about it wasn't helpful and that was pre principles or pre understanding. So the idea that your your innate wisdom was already working for you, which we exactly. know is true. We know it's true, but sometimes we're not necessarily seeing it as so. That's right. Cool. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And again, I I thank thank God that I did have that insight because it would have been it was it was it was really you know it was really painful. Um, and and but once you see it it's like okay well i'll just i'll it was like i'll just follow that path you know uh, and for as long as that was helpful and in what um, is your daughter in what order is she where does she she's a number two so i have a i have a now i have a 20 year old son he was two at the time um because now she's 18. um and then i have my third son um he is sorry my second son third child he is um he has autism and adhd so he is you know he he's presented other challenges you know more behavioral um than anything else and it just you know it's a different um skill set as it were you know that that is much more testing you know of my i guess it's just more challenging from a from a behavioral you know kind of an in the moment day-to-day moment-to-moment experience um whereas my daughter is is you know she is very disabled but also she is fine like and it's funny when you say she's fine what that means is what i mean is that she is very mature very funny very capable even given even though she is not physically very capable she you know she 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 I don't know how to describe it, but I guess it's more of a feeling than anything else that she she is um, she's on a on a you know on a healthy track, so to speak, within her own parameters. Um, my son, you know, he has much more because it's a more behavioural kind of um, impact. It, it changes day to day, moment to moment, kind of thing, you know, and it can affect all of us in the family quite significantly just you know it's very up and down in that respect she's much more consistent she's on a you know steady you know thing so um just yeah he 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 can be you know he 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 can he can disrupt and 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 challenge you know everyone in the house and you know in different ways and we love him very much and we try and help him he's He's in a mainstream school, where it's like a you know regular high school. He's not in a special school, um, and it's it's just interesting how it is challenging on a you know on a different level. And so, you, you know, I I I again, you talk about wisdom. So there have been moments where I see that that my wisdom kicks in and kind of points me in the direction of just trying to connect with him more than anything um rather than just trying to achieve certain things you know so the ability you know the idea of trying to achieve certain outcomes is is different with him than it would be with my daughter um and again it just requires a different kind of skill set and connection um 
my daughter has certain physical challenges which need um you know kind of physical physical um solutions mm-hmm. whereas my son requires much more i would say spiritual or interpersonal connection kind of problems you know because his is a behavioral you know kind of challenge you know so um you know my with my you know we speak about my you know wisdom but it's very often i i try and connect with him on a much more person to person basis just to try and you know help lift his spirits into a into a different different you know environment so you know i'll i will try and play you know he's very into his computer games so uh, you know i will try and spend time playing with him on you know meeting him where he's at on his level with his computer games um as a means of just connecting with him yeah. you know because that's more helpful whereas my daughter doesn't you know she doesn't she doesn't need help or support like that yeah you know that i i as a human experiencing all this um i personally can't even imagine um the mental mindset right but you said something that really sparked me which is you just meet him where he's at meet them where they're at and and whether it's a necessity or not a necessity if they need to like letting go of oh we're going to complete xyz today or you know because it's their state of the, like as they feel comfortable and um heard and connected that's their ability to soar in an area that they might want to what whether it's computer games or you know getting their clothes on in the morning or maybe cleaning their bedroom <laughs> yeah yeah so the the achievements happen more when they're in a connected space is that it is do i have that right yeah but i i kind of feel like that's a you see to to me that's a good general principle so again me wanting to ha- achieve certain outcomes with either of my children would work in different ways but i think the same is true of anything in life you've got to kind of be present in life wherever you're at and whatever you're trying to achieve you know i see that and it's a a lesson that i'm continually learning and seeing and and experiencing and it's not just with my children but that, that it's very easy to kind of use them as a as an example but the same is true of me like i i um I started uh running yesterday as I started because I hadn't run for a while right I I I I ran um I ran three marathons um in like 2016 to 18 um having never run before I didn't even speak about this but no no I I <laughs> used to I used to I used to weigh uh, consider, quite a considerable amount and and I started exercising and I, and again the point is that I that I started running again yesterday and again for me to just try and say right well now I'm going to run 10 miles or or you know 15 kilometers right so having not run for a while for you know a good couple of months it would be it would be ridiculous I'd end up hurting myself mm-hmm. right so I have to just connect to the moment be present in the moment and you know use my common sense and wisdom to help me see what well, okay what's the sensible amount to run you know mm-hmm. and it's the same thing with them it's like i might want to run 15 kilometers or 10 miles or whatever it is right but but i i'm not going to achieve that and if i do i'm going to do myself a harm you know and it's the same with them if i want my son to i don't know you know kind of work hard in his in his exams and achieve you know his his you know good grades okay it might be very nice but it's the same you know it's the same not just for him but it's the same for any child my other children you know i've got two other other kids after that i've got a another son um who is uh, so that that son the third you know my third child is 16 and then the, the son after that is 12 and then i have another daughter nine mm-hmm. um so and and they they are you know they're both uh they they have they have no they have no special needs other than just their their regular children you say I'm sure they need you want you yeah, abide exactly. your attention yeah exactly your, your wallet all those other things they have needs for do do tell though around 
I, the core of family, as you said, everyone reflects or uh, impacts the family network. So how how do you notice uh, and what the the strength and the ability for the other kids to support and blend and be a part of what is you know evident in your family, which can be um, uh, your daughter and your son and are are they what tell me the dynamics how do they how do they see you know their their siblings and and their support and well just like with any other siblings you know in any other family it varies a lot depending on what what's going on at any given time right so sometimes it's like they can be you know great and fully understanding and or not fully understanding but helpful you know because my daughter obviously requires a lot of um care and so we try and you know strike a balance between having carer carers in the home for her but also her having her independence as much as you know she can have so we don't have carers like at night you know we we kind of you know cover that base between us mm -hmm. you know and I say us because it's a family you know it's a it's a family job it's not a you know mommy or daddy kind of job it's like everyone has to do their bit and not has to but does their bit with her you know and so sometimes they enjoy that and sometimes they've got other things that they want to be getting on with um and and you know the same is true with you know with my son sometimes um they you know like playing you know they like playing you know video games with him and sometimes they don't because you know he can he can be challenging yeah um uh, but but it's the same you know it presents it presents the same lessons as any other family that's just life life is about you know connecting with other people and dealing with the ups and downs of relationships and so sometimes you're going to enjoy that and sometimes you're not and and we have to learn how to adapt to that you know to 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 life you know we've got to kind of learn to let things go and, and move on and you know just live in a healthy space as much as we all can and you know me too you too everyone you know we all have that um and so you know same for me you know living with with them is how it presents its challenges sometimes and sometimes it doesn't you know mm -hmm. um but they all you know we all coexist and get on well together and and everyone makes adjustments for you know everyone as best they can and we do our best i'm not in any way suggesting i'm a, a world expert in terms of bringing up this family or anyone else's but i but we do our best you know we do our best yeah no i can i um i can imagine the undertaking as just i don't have a family uh, but i can imagine the undertaking as um you know, many children just as they are, and then some of the unique uh, challenges and struggles that every individual will bring to, to a family dynamic. And I know my siblings, uh, I have many, and uh, there's <laughs> there's lots of different thoughts around <laughs> what any one of them were doing back then. And uh, right. yeah, no different, no different in that way. Uh, you touched on something that I thought was really um, uh, unique. I also was a marathon runner and uh, know the commitments of that. And so there's that place where you've shared your experience. So there's a strength in here. There's a strength that we're talking about that is um, internal and part of you and that has got you all the way to here, five children and all of these challenges. And you've now added on, um, you know, beginning to run and incrementally taking some time to do that. And I remember, um, uh, you know, short of having handkerchiefs on the forehead, running around the convention hall, doing what you do, and you've got more plates than family. And so I'm curious, would you want to share with everybody all the other things you're doing on top of this beautiful family that you have? Because you're in charge of just finished the completing the um, April convention virtually, and then you built a business around that. Do you want to share? Yeah. That? Yeah. Yeah. So um, in 2019, is it 2019? No, it's 2020, 2020. Um, so we've been doing this conference for, um, as I said, since 2010 or 2010. Yeah, I think it was 2010 we started our first conference. And we had like 130 people, something like that, to our, you know, centre in, in Northwest London. Um, 
And so we've built it over the years and it's always been a physical event. We've had some sort of online streaming of it always, um, hybrid, they call it now. Um, but but we were, we were, we were streaming it before, be, before YouTube Live was a thing and before uh, Zoom was even invented. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, um, so we, we, the, the, the pandemic came along, as it were, and all those changes, you know, kind of were ushered in. And um, we realized that we couldn't run it in person um, and that we'd have to do, if we wanted to do it, we'd have to do it online. And so we did. So um, basically we set out on a, you know, sort of on a, on a quest so to speak, uh, how can we present a conference and still keep the, the feeling and the experience of it for the for the users, but 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 you know deliver you know but do it virtually? Um, and so we investigated you know a different number of platforms and and um, you know you, you know managed to create this event in 2020, and and it was a, it was a really great. A great success you know like you said we've had about 1300 um people sign up um last year which um which was fantastic and in the process of doing that um i realized that um it was not as simple to do and i could see that there were going to be a lot of people who were trying to do something similar to what we had done because our conference, you know, the, the the changes were 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 all implemented in April, and we were delivering our conference in June, um, and so I could see that there were a lot of um, there was just a lot of potential. It just felt like a, a you know a a it, yeah it, fe- it felt it felt it felt like there was something there to to explore. Like there, like I had a I have, as I said to you before we started, you know, I've always had an interest in, you know, gadgets and technology. And I'm, you know, quite, I see myself as quite capable in that. I, I don't, I never f- feel limited by anything. It's just a question of learning it. You know, we're all, you know, we, we as I said at the beginning, you know, when we, we all have, we all have this, you know, innate intelligence. I, I, I believe that everyone has the capability of, of, you know, learning new things and, and, you know, there are plenty of, um, you know, uh, places out there to kind of learn new skills and and things like that online so so um having taught myself and and kind of learned how to create this virtual event um i could see that there was a potential there for other people and so i created a business called vievma um with ben who is my now business partner who is who was like my right hand man at the conference so you probably met kelly at the conference <laughs> yeah yeah that's ben. right I call him the yeah. second guy. He's yeah. in and out. <laughs> yeah. So he he so he and I started this business and we've organized, you know, conferences and online virtual um, you know, events for people all over the world. Um we did an event two weeks ago, which was, you know, truly global. It was a women's entrepreneurs and business network. So people from all over the world, you know, people from Egypt and Kuwait and Africa and, you know, America and the Far East, really this huge global network. Um, and it, it's, you know, been very successful, you know, so far, thank God, you know, it's all going very well. Um, and, you know, I'm still still organizing the conference as part of, you know, part of that work, but it, 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 it has, the potential to 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 you know to to really grow to something special um and again last summer also um just another thing and it sounds a bit crazy when i'm saying it back but again i'd been i'd been speaking with claire shoots um who has cerebral palsy herself so we'd done a talk at the 2019 conference about just dealing with challenges um her talking about her cerebral palsy because she has you know cerebral palsy not as severe as my daughter but she has cerebral palsy herself and I I I I spoke from the you know the the kind of the position as a parent and I could again I, I could see having met people in our you know in in my daughter's you know kind of world and in that remit as a parent I'd met other parents who were struggling um and you know psychologically struggling you know and so 
having been through and seen the value of the principles, it seemed obvious to try and share the principles and this understanding with, you know, that community. And so Claire and I last year um, started on that path of creating the Almond Tree, which is um, a nonprofit, you know, uh, nonprofit organization based in the UK. It's called the almondtree.org. Um, and we have, we just launched and delivered our first set of uh, webinars, um, which are, um, yeah, which are available through the website. They're all recordings there and, and they're, you know, they're totally free. Um, and it's, the response has been fantastic. We, we did that with Linda Pransky, who, who, if you don't know, Linda's husband, George, who I mentioned at the beginning, so he, he had a stroke two years ago. And so she was talking from her experience as the spouse of, a, uh, of someone who'd gone through a severe you know, medical diagnosis and the prognosis for him was not good. Um, and so again, just dealing with the challenges that we faced all as individuals was really, it was really quite something special. And, and I think the, the response has been, you know, exceptional, you know, we, we, from starting from scratch, we had, you know, 400 plus people sign up and, you know, watch the webinars. And again, lots of people who are in this community, in this kind of medical diagnosis and, and, um, um, you know, parenting and, and, and all of that, you know, that dealing with uh, diagnosis and disability, let's call it, community, the response has been really um, exceptional and something that I think, yeah, well, Claire and I didn't really expect. So, so we're building that and, and we're, you know, having now kind of almost like proved the, the concept, as it were, we're moving on to the next stage of building this into something more substantial. Um, yeah, I want to I want to say something to that because um, I, I just want to back up just for a sec. Uh, we're talking about for people unfamiliar um, the three P UK convention. So that's the convention that Julian's talking about when he says he's running that, and I'm saying it. And now, as you know, it's called the AlmondTree.org, and I had the pleasure of watching that this weekend. Um, uh, the recordings that are available to everybody, and I I think this speaks to that place where you know, this conversation even is going. There's a sense of hope in those recordings for people that are with with their thinking in challenge, you know, with their experiences where you may not be seeing um, your own personal strength and wisdom or, and Julian and uh, Claire, along with Linda, really, really, truly point to the experience of hope. And so maybe, Julian, you can talk a little bit about that because the conversation there, I just kept feeling very hopeful throughout the whole series. It was a mini series of videos accessible to all of you and um, you can find it at uh, thealmondtree.org. But maybe you could speak to hope. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, it's difficult to know where to start exactly, but I'll just kind of talk and you can ask me questions about yeah. it. Um, but, and I don't want to sound too cliched, you know, so, uh, but I realized I, I, uh, my, my general mindset is quite cl cliched. So, you know, there is always hope. It's very easy to say that, but there is, you know, the principles, this understanding points to the fact that no matter how dark and upsetting and distressing and dark um, a, a place, you know, might feel, you know, that someone might be in, um, that a new experience is just around the corner. Through, through this understanding that your thinking creates your experience. So if, if someone is able to realize that their thinking creates their experience, they are able to see through the the darkness and the pain that they are experiencing. Um, and that's not as something to work on, but just that the possibility exists always for things to look different. So with my daughter's um, or my son's, you know, kind of diagnosis, that those physically aren't changing. 
but how I feel about those experiences is the variable. And that's the hope that this offers. And again, it doesn't matter how painful it is, the fact that there is a possibility that you can have a different experience in any moment. Um, because, because, again, because our thinking creates our experience and because, you know, we are, we are beings aware of, of our own experience, okay? So we have the ability to, to, to see and feel it differently at any moment. And that is incredibly hopeful. That means that it doesn't matter where you are or what you're facing, um, you can have a more hopeful and a more up, uplifted and a more positive experience at any moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's how things have changed for me and how, you know, and that's, that's what we wanted to point to in these webinars. So I'm really pleased that you kind of pointed that out, Kelly, because that's, that was, you know, that, that, that was what we wanted to kind of focus on is to offer people hope because I, I, you know, it's not, uh, it's, it, again, I, I have come across families who are in immense amount of pain and struggle, not, not, not in terms of the physical um, details of the issues that they're facing, but because of how they feel about them because they feel so hopeless and just so um, just worn down as they see it by the physical experience, Mm -hmm. not realizing that their their psychological experience is what's being created for them. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. There's something in that where I see um, the attachment to what they think they know in front of them rather than uh, the letting go to the unknown of what is yet to be seen or what is yet to be shown up. And the hopes in that place is that they, that they see that they can go there because it's in the unknown, the things we haven't seen yet, that's going to come to us. That's that thing that is going to be happening. That's the hope is that place where when we're, when we're sitting in the known of something, oh, this is the circumstance, this is the trauma, this is the problem. It's just in that experience when we move into what we haven't seen yet, where it's all open and the possibilities are there. That changes the the view. Hmm. Yeah, you see, it's difficult. It's it's it is difficult to to to, to kind of show somebody that. But again, you're just looking for possibility, hope, and possibility. In other words, I don't know what the future will hold for either of my, for any of my children, for any of my children. Um, but as much as I can, I'm not interested in um, exploring the possibilities of what's going to happen in 10 years time, five years time, however long. Like, I'll leave that up to the universe and just right here, right now, what can I do to um, help myself? you know, have a, a good experience because that will help them and also just help them, you know, what can I do? So, you know, recently my wife and I re- recognized that my son, again, we keep forgetting this, we should know it, but because he's very capable in lots of other areas, but he doesn't regulate his food and eating like, in the same way as a normal child would, especially a teenager who, you know, Many just eat straight out of, you know, they will just come hunting for food. So he he doesn't regulate himself and he's always been like that. And we've really, you know, we've recognized that again. And so our job is to just try and make sure that he is eating and looking after himself and drinking, you know, kind of regularly so that he because that obviously has an effect on his, you know, his his stamina and and you know, kind of mood levels. You know, if he if he is not eating um physically it affects just his his general mood so so we need to kind of keep an eye on that and and so again that's something that we're trying to uh, again just being just sit, living again I don't want to say living in the moment because it's not something that we are um, actively working on but it's just it, it's it's 
it, it, that it's the phrase that's in the, <laughs> the, the, the kind of encapsulates it and then it makes it sound like a thing but it it is more of just you know we're living in the, the experience of the here and now rather than just kind of trying to figure out well what's you know what's her life going to be what's his life going to be like when he's you know x years old and can we get him to that level like in a way I'm not I, I trust in the universe enough to know that that will be fine and it will work itself out um and it's a day-to-day -day kind of thing now and so when we spoke about running before you know it's like you don't just wake up one day as I said and become a marathon runner it's like it's lots of little steps that you build along the way right here right now today I'm going to try and do this or a, you know and sometimes you don't manage to achieve it but it's like it's it's lots of little in the moments kind of moving forwards that will kind of make things you know kind of create the bigger picture it's like that you know those 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 big pictures of lots of little pictures yes. right it's like Come it's on. like they all they they all exist those all those little pictures exist but they're all part of the bigger whole and so it it, it all it all sorts itself out in the end you know that that we just have to do our best in in you know the moment that we find ourselves in really mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. living in that feeling of hope grabbing yeah. onto the hope yeah right yeah well i think this might be a great place what are you thinking i shall we open up to see if anybody has any questions did you i just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us today yeah. thank you yeah it's been a great conversation does anybody have any questions or would you like to ask julian anything or share um Hi. yes could you please talk about the kind mind academy and <laughs> I sure can. How you, how you support uh, the children? Yeah. yeah. So oh, the, the parents, uh, the community. Yeah. The, the Kind Mind Academy. Um, my my purpose and goal is to bring beautiful people like yourselves together, and house a speaker like Julian, so that you can be enlightened on. Um, your understanding, hope, possibilities, and it's 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 about seeing more for yourself to um, listen to different speakers with different circumstances and situations, and come together as a group. And so even you uh, may have the feeling of being a speaker one day, and just like Julian, I would love to host you, and share your wisdom and your experience just like Julian did for people looking for more hope. That's what we're doing here. Yes. <laughs> and uh, how do you um, share? I mean, you share the, the principles through stories, mm -hmm. uh, like personal stories. Um, and um, is that it? Uh, or is there other ways like you, you do like um, workshops or things like that? So. Yeah, there are things just like Julian's uh, workshop at theAlmondTree.org, which yes. is for right. um, uh, for conversations of hope and possibility. Um, I too do that as well. Um, I have uh, classes and courses that I run. Actually, some of my participants are in the room right now. Uh, my beautiful, they become my beautiful friends. And um, I think you would say so the same, Julian, would you not? That people that work within the principles become friends. Yeah, and absolutely. So we all have a little something that we offer and you can find the offers on kindmindacademy.ca. And right now, today is actually my the closing of one of my classes. Uh, we've just had a group that's been going for 24 weeks and they're they're graduating tonight. <laughs> so- Wow, well, that's fun. Yeah. That's Yes. And, and so, yeah, um, there's there's many opportunities in the principles for you to uh, find your way. Uh, Julian's is one of them, and I have one as well. Thank you for asking. Yeah, you can you can find some of the information. I can type that in as well. Does that answer your question, Estelle? Is it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Was Was there anything else that you'd like to ask Julian, or or something that you might have heard? Or are you good? Oh, I forgot the mind part. <laughs> There's, I'm losing. I think it's frozen. Oh, Julian, uh, I wanted to say when I saw you saw the video of your uh, 
daughter earlier uh, when um, she was our sister was helping her to 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 drink and uh, you could see the energy <laughs> She doesn't need anything. She's so present and she's so... And it's really funny because um, it was on someone's Facebook page, someone from the 3P recently. And uh, he asked, how would you express yourself, your love, if you could not speak? Like, for example, and I was like, oh, I don't know. How would I do that? <laughs> and in the morning, I, I mean, and then I thought, okay, I'm going to do a little experiment. And uh, I'm going to pretend that I've lost my voice because of the AC or whatever. And in, so I did that the following morning and, and I was not speaking and I wrote a note on Matthias saying, oh, I have a sore throat because of the AC. And I think if I have some ginger tea, I feel better. But for now, I can't speak. And it was a lot of insights came from that experience, actually. It's like, oh, wow. Um, um, because I always have an opinion on everything. <laughs> we communicate. And suddenly I could not say anything. And I was there uh, create, uh, like uh, encouraging and, and approving and uh, in a non-verbal way and realizing everything would fall into place, whether or not I speak. You know? <laughs> and, and, and then I started to understand Wow, is it what deep listening is? <laughs> and um, and yes, and then it, it it gave me more insight on. You talked about micromanagement earlier, and 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 I would say also leadership. So you know that it brings the inside out awareness yeah. on leadership and uh, micromanagement. So the intention: why do you do this, and and how would you do it from an inside out perspective? And uh, so it was beautiful. Um, and a lot of what you said resonated with me. Uh, uh, Thank you, Esther. Yeah. yeah, yeah, beautiful. That was lovely. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's great to meet you. Great to meet you. Does anyone else would like to share? Hi, Ray John. Did you want to say something? Yes. Um, I just want to say, Julian. I was watching you while you were talking about your children and the smile, the constant smile. I mean, I could just see the love and, and feel it from you. Like, um, it, it's just, it was just so beautiful to see that, you know, like you were just expressing what they're like. And, um, and it was like, wow, they're so fortunate to have you as a dad. <laughs> they're so lucky. And I'm, and I'm sure the mom as well. And, and, but it, the, it, it just came out of you, just like an um, amazing feeling. I, I, love, I just enjoyed it so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, you were, very, you very were, much. You were like looking up and then, but talking and then smiling. And then I just, I felt the whole feeling from you was just real and genuine. And yeah, that's, that was pretty special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Annette, do you want to go ahead? And then Rosalia. Yeah. Thank you for the beautiful conversation. Uh, I'm sorry, I was uh, I missed the first part, but I certainly can resonate to to what you said and what Estelle was pointing to about the um, the nonverbal communication. I have a differently abled daughter who's now 26 and. I've had the pleasure of learning so much from her. And she, she developed uh, speech uh, later, but, but uh, she can communicate pretty well. But a lot of her friends uh, don't have language the way we do. Yeah. And if, anyone, if any of us would say that, oh, such and such person can't speak, she would go, what? You could, you could see that she would wonder, you know, what are you talking about? You know, because they have, they have this beautiful way of communicating mm -hmm. without the words. Mm -hmm. and, and she can always kind of translate 
for for those of us who get a little limited in our mindset and cannot figure out what someone is trying to communicate. And she's like, oh, la, 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 la. And, it's exactly and, it. I know yeah. what you mean. My daughter has the same thing with her friends. Like, you, you, you listen and you can't hear, a, like, I can't hear a word of what she's saying. And the two of them could be chatting away and, yeah, having a proper conversation. It's yeah. like... It's 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 almost miraculous in a way, but I I know what you mean. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, and I was also I became aware of it when she was very small and she had very limited uh, speech herself, and her bigger brother could do the same thing. He would be the one to translate for us. That's exactly what happens. In and, me. and it I'm was the worst. so. Yeah, and it was just so beautiful to be reminded of our natural way of communicating that that this intuitive, mm -hmm. non-verbal, uh, or not in verbal, like in English or Norwegian uh, yeah. language, that there is such a, a beautiful way of just uh, telepathically or intuitively communicating. And... And just because we had we had the pleasure of having her in the family, I think um, we kept on to that ability a little more than what normal families, in a way, normal if you can call other families normal. Um, that that um, having a child that's differently abled in the family, it made us hold on to that ability, I think, more, because I think a lot of people in this society learn that you can't trust that way of communicating. Like you can't trust the into your intuition or, or that nonverbal. So it was, she has been such a great teacher and I feel so honored in a way to, to have been chosen as her mother uh because it's just taught me so much mm. and it's so inspiring and a beautiful reminder what you've been pointing to through the conversation today and just to see how it seems like you you navigate life in such a beautiful way mm. it's very touching thank you oh. <laughs> So Thank you. Thank you, Annette. Yes. Great to have you in the room. And I love it's the absence of words. Yeah. 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 Rosalia, did you want to share? Thanks, and Kelly. Christel. I just yeah. wanted to uh to thank both of you guys for being here to host this and Kelly for you doing it so often every week. Um Jillian, I gotta say your um, your story. I I appreciate so much um, your deep sharing and um, the insights that uh, you've given us into the family unit. And I just um, I have so many thoughts, and I'm just gonna share a few of them with you. Is one you and your wife stood together and did it. My other thought was, I can't believe you guys had more children when your plate was so full. And the legacy that you guys are, are um, leaving behind for all of your children as an example, and just how much better humanity will be that will be touched by the lives of just one family unit. And I just... Um, I just want to commend you and your wife and, and the rest of the family for working together at this and just um, doing it the way it should be done as just from in, in my opinion. And um, I just wanted to really thank you for being solid mm -hmm. through it all. Thank you, Rosalia. I really appreciate that. Thank you. It's very, very touching. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing, mm. Rosalia. Estelle, did you want to say? Go ahead. Yeah, no, I just want to say was beautiful <laughs> messages and uh, yes, thank you for this. And I, I just wanted to go back to the nonverbal parts and like uh, just thinking like 
how these little babies can drive us nuts, you know. <laughs> Even though they don't speak, they manage to make us do everything for them, or, you know, like communicate, interact with, with no world. But also my dog, you know, he has a way to, like I was thinking, if I don't, if I can't speak and I want or move and want someone to help me, you know, how would I express myself? <laughs> and when I looked at Kenny, who's been adopted last year, I mean, uh, he's amazing at pointing things and <laughs> making me do things for him, opening the door or, you know, giving him some food or whatever without any word. And I, I'm doing all these things, you know, in a non-verbal way. So it's uh, pretty interesting how powerful we are on an energetic point of, point of view. Mm -hmm. Energetic point of view. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> William, would you like to go, go right ahead? Well, like other people are saying, I just love how much you love life. It just speaks so well. I just, and I, I, I noticed that I, I love being inspired by other people. And, and the way I see you describing your kids, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of reminds me how you're you're looking at life that there's a kind of a, a, a gap between you and life that is so powerful because you're just seeing them and uh, it, it's you have the clarity to okay I need to do this or they do everything it's like you're not you're not having to manage them you're just uh, doing the best you can do. Yeah, I mean, all of the love that just oozes out of you. But mainly, I just see how much you're just loving life yourself. And with all the bumps and bruises, it's it, that's just part of it. It's kind of like, this is my job, and I just love it. And then um, I, being more and more hard of hearing myself, I find that not having words is so much easier. And there are oftentimes when I don't understand what someone's saying, it gives me an excuse to get a little closer trying to pick up, but it's like I don't have to respond to their words or whatever their thoughts are. There's a plus and minus to that, but I'm just saying how much how easier it is, or when I'm eating and don't have to talk or make up sentences to listen to people and just enjoy the food. <clears throat> and I think it's that enjoying the moment without having to think, think, think. And yet there's that part when it's just flowing, it's just like a melody that coming out of me too. But I, I just, I, I heard you in the shoots and Linda Pratt, the, the hope and and just the willingness to keep looking, just look in that direction. Don't know, but I see a little light down there and I'm gonna keep heading in that direction and just being in the present, in the present. So I just, well, and and uh, it, it, it's just so enjoyable being around you. I, I can tell you're just like a magnet because you're just, having so much fun, you know, he's like, what, what's that guy eating? <laughs> right. So anyway, I just, uh, I really enjoyed it. And I just marvel at what you've, how, how you're helping so many, not just your kids, but everybody. So I want to thank you, William, because I, you, you've helped me remember what we were speaking about as part of the planning for the course and you give me goosebumps. Um, so we made the last topic of our kind of webinar series kind of, is it possible to be lighthearted in the face of, you know, kind of challenges, life challenges, you know? Um, but you're hundred percent right. Like, again, I'm not trying to do this, but I do feel that and see that life is fun. Like it is fun. Like I'm not doing this 
you know, I'm not here trying to, well, I am trying to have fun, but that's my kind of primary goal is like my, my, I don't want to say even I've got a goal, but if I had a goal, it would be that I'm trying to have fun. Like I just want to, life is good. Okay. And it's a blessing. And it, despite, as you said, all the bumps and bruises I get, and we will get bumps and bruises. It's to be enjoyed. And like, if I'm not enjoying it, I, I don't want to, I am not, I don't want to do it anymore. Like I, I'll change to find something that is enjoyable. And so one of the, when I started this, you know, this, this shift last, last summer with, with Claire to start the Almond Tree and, and for this, the, the virtual events, Vievma, like my goal was to have fun doing those things. And I've said this to Claire and I've said this to Linda and, and also Ben, like if, if it's not fun, then we're doing something wrong. <laughs> like, like that's the orientation that I like to look in. And it's the same with my family as well. Like, have fun. It, you know, because everything else will happen along the way in the right way. Like their their lives, my life, everything will work itself out. But I want to live in a feeling of fun and enjoyment with with life. Like, and and yeah, I I, I that's a big shift for me. It is a big shift for me because where I started was, you know, fifteen years ago. As I said, it wasn't that at all. It was. You know, I've got to earn a living and I've got to, you know, kind of do a good job and I want people to like me and I've got to, you know, kind of everything has to be, you know, perfect. But but it's not. It's shifted from that to to, you know, enjoying life along along the way, you know, and that's much more beneficial. So thank you. It, and, you, you know, we often use the phrase life is living us or me. It's really fun is living me. And then there's no me when I'm having fun because I'm so in the moment just enjoying whatever's happening and it just does it for me. It's just so nice. It's freedom. It's just free and being. So anyway, I keep, yeah. Love Thank it. Thank you. I love this conversation. I don't know. I keep it, the word love keeps coming up in this conversation, Julie, and you, you've sparked this beautiful feeling in me for uh, the reason I do what I do. So I am so glad you came to this room and I, I'm sure everybody else here agrees. Does anyone else like to speak up or would like to say anything because they feel an the love <laughs> because they're feeling the love or because it's fun and they just want to do it. <laughs> exactly. Would anybody else like to say anything? Okay. So if not, then uh, I've got my cuppeth overfloweth. <laughs> I'm full of love and I'm ready to seek some fun in my day. And uh, I just want to thank you so much. I, we 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 tapped on so many different places and there's so many more i i think we could definitely have you back for another conversation next year because there's a whole nother arena of you that ha hasn't even been unfolded but i will say that um that you've touched me very deeply with your the way we see i see you and your family and what you do for the grandest of communities which is the 3p uk but more so for just the human one-to-one -one. And so I thank you with all my heart. I thank everybody here for coming. And uh, next week, I'm on holiday. <laughs> and it's the first holiday I've taken in eight months. So um, I will see you guys all with Christine Heath on International Women's Day on August 9th. And so until then, uh, put some fun and love in your hearts. And we'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye,